Everything's Denver. Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 36 and today we're going to talk about the Denver International Airport accident. The first game in the series is full of small nuggets of buried information that build out the world that is Assassin's Creed. It introduces us to information like Mexico closing its borders from American refugees, Africa being virtually uninhabited, and an incident with new fluoride through Warren Vidic's emails. But one small detail within the emails seemed to grow in importance the most after the first game in the series, and that is the Denver International Airport satellite accident and the existence of the I Abstergo satellite launch. It introduces an interesting conundrum. Without the satellite, we wouldn't have had the accident. But without the accident, the satellite probably would have launched. Most of the information that we get about the Denver International Airport accident and the satellite itself are contained within Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Initiates, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Revelations, and Assassin's Creed III. Although the details of the accident are sketchy at best, what is known is that the project lead, Daniel Cross, was working on an experiment under the Denver International Airport, which I'll refer to as the DIA accident from now on, because it's much easier to say, sometime before October 2011. Somehow, he fell under the influence of an apple of Eden, the apple that some have called Altair's apple. This resulted in at least 20 casualties and the destruction of the apple of Eden, all before Abstergo's cleanup crew had arrived. However, one person, a civilian who is believed to have been a baggage handler at the airport, is thought to have survived and threatened to expose what happened, including Abstergo's involvement in the accident. The threats led Abstergo to sweep the city, thinking that this person had connections to the assassins, as they had proven difficult to pin down. By September 2012, the cell of assassins in Denver went dark without warning. It's anyone's guess if this team of assassins had anything to do with the accident or not. But to have a cell working in this city, while Abstergo was doing some major work under the airport, seems more than coincidental to me. The apple that the Templars were using in this project is an important piece within Assassin's Creed history. First, this apple is known by Altair as the Templar's treasure, making this the apple at the center of the story that Desmond relives. It is also the apple that Altair spends most of his life learning from, and the one Ezio finds later in the library of Masayat. Further along in the series, though, we also discover that this is the same apple at the center of the story in Assassin's Creed Origins. The quote that we started with, Everything's Denver, is difficult to understand. It's said twice in Assassin's Creed. In both instances, one person was upset, and the phrase was used as a way to calm them down. Warren Vidic was the first to say it, as a way to reassure an unknown person on the other end of the phone when discussing a possible rescue attempt of Desmond by the assassins. The other time, Lucy said it to Warren when he asked if there was a problem with a file transfer. She flat out tells Desmond that the phrase means that everything is fine, but she also states that it's because of the DIA accident. But it leaves me wondering if the accident was a bad thing then why would the team use the phrase to say everything is really fine? But the biggest question here is, what was the plan? What was the goal of I Abstergo? Publicly, the satellite was nothing more than a communication satellite designed for consumer use. But it was secretly engineered by Abstergo, a Templar company, to ensure that their new world order would be enforced on Earth. The plan for the I dates back to 2008, when the company first launched the Akashic Satellite Plexus, This group of satellites was designed as a network of satellites to coordinate communications, weather, and observations of Earth. Once the eye launched, it was meant to locate people with potential, or those with ISU DNA, that the Templars planned to control for their own benefit. The eye itself was set to launch on December 21, 2012, and was designed to amplify an Apple of Eden to complete its goals. For the most part, the construction of the satellite and the Akashic satellite plexus as a whole is unknown. The only thing we really know about the construction of the eye is that it led to the DIA accident. At first it makes sense that the Templars would need to find a new apple after this one is destroyed at DIA. 
At the very least, they'd need a different artifact to make the Eye Abstergo satellite work the way they want it to. But in the next game, we learn there's a high probability that the Templars already have more than one apple. In fact, this one apple is one of nine known apples in Assassin's Creed. And if this was the case, why bring Desmond in? Why look for more artifacts other than the reason of controlling them all? Are there other projects that are using the additional apples in their possession? Because at this point, we know the Templars have ties to as many as three other apples, whether directly or indirectly, through companies that Abstergo has a lot of influence in. The story of these apples feels like it's a loose story thread that most likely won't ever be mentioned again, mostly because of how long it's sat unused. The aftermath of the accident is what really sets the series into motion, though. It is unclear if the eye was being assembled below the airport, or if they were just using the location to test the apple to see what it could do. What we do know is that the launch was only delayed by the accident, and that while Warren Vidic prepared the final report of the accident, Abstergo went forward with plans to launch a satellite by December 21st, 2012. The only thing stopping them was that they needed a new Apple of Eden. The search for the new Apple led Daniel Cross to bring in Desmond Miles for the Animus Project, but Daniel would refuse to ever go back to Denver. Of all the little nuggets of information that we get from the emails within the first Assassin's Creed, the accident is the one that gets followed up the most with subsequent installments throughout the series. In the first Assassin's Creed, all we really learn about the DIA accident is that it happened and that it destroyed a piece of Eden, the apple that is known as Altair's apple. It's not until we get into later installments that we discover Daniel Cross's involvement and that the satellite was part of the Akashic Satellite Plexus. Granted, it's more than what we learned about most other pieces of information within Assassin's Creed, but it brings to mind the questions of what the idea was behind the accident or where they were planning to go with it, if they were even planning to go anywhere to begin with. It seems that at first, the satellite launch was meant to be something the assassins stopped by destroying the piece of Eden. From all the information we're given in Assassin's Creed, we're also led to believe that the Eye of Stergo satellite was designed to control the human populace, not to search out gifted people like Desmond. There's just so much information that we must add from our own minds that it's tough to comprehend where we are now. When you look back at Assassin's Creed and see this burgeoning franchise that would let you look inside these emails after just one game, it's the little details that make me wonder what the series could have become if the director of the first game, Patrice de Chalet, had stayed on as director of the series and not left after the first few games. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give me a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC, and you can find those links in this episode's show notes. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.